Do your kids have enough time to eat lunch at school? It is a question parents have been responding to on Facebook. Our recent Operation Education investigation looked at school lunch times and studies that indicate they may not be long enough. WSBT 22's Tolly Taylor has your reaction and tells us why experts say there are solutions to the problem. I asked parents on Facebook last week, do you feel like your child has enough time to eat lunch at school? The replies came quickly, with the majority of responders saying their kids didn't. One woman who says she's a lunch lady disagreed, writing, I can tell you from seeing it firsthand that kids have more than enough time to eat. The problem is that they want to socialize and play with their food. Another woman replied saying, I've been to lunch with my kids plenty of times to see that if you're at the end of the lunch line, you do not have enough time to eat. Elementary school kids are rushed. Obviously, there's disagreement, so I posed the question to local students. Do you always feel like you have enough time to eat lunch every day? Vanessa Martinez is a fourth grader at Woodland Elementary in Elkhart. She loves the chicken nuggets, the cornbread is a close second, and she likes the food options overall. But she wishes she had 10 more minutes to eat her lunch every day and talk with her friends. Woodland fourth graders get 30 minutes for lunch, but Martinez says it's less than that by the time she sits down with her tray. Harvard's Juliana Cohen says that's pretty common based on her 2019 study. The study looked at more than 1,000 students and found that kids who have less than 20 minutes to sit and eat their lunch eat about 13% less food. Cohen says that slow transitions to lunch and long lines for food can decrease the amount of time kids have, but there are simple solutions. The ordering in advance so they're not standing there thinking about which choice they want, um, increasing the number of lunch lines so that we can get kids through faster, and then using swipe cards instead of having students punch in an ID. Cohen says some schools have kids fill out what they want for lunch right when they walk into the classroom. Lunch lines move faster that way, she says, while other schools add registers or give students swipe cards to speed things up. There's no federal standard for how long lunch periods should be. And here's what local schools budget for time. Depending on the school and grade level, they range from 20 to 50 minutes. Cohen says the ideal is 30 minutes, with 25 minutes seated. But there's another common problem that both Cohen and Robert Murray, a longtime pediatrician with a focus in school nutrition, have noticed. Schools that schedule recess after lunch. They'll guzzle um, a half a thing of milk and they'll eat the dessert and they'll take a couple of bites of the hamburger and then they're out the door to recess. A spokesperson for Mishawaka Schools tells me that the seven elementary schools have between 40 to 50 minutes for lunch and recess. She says most students spend 20 to 30 minutes eating before heading outside to recess. But Cohen and Murray say this encourages kids to eat faster which can become a lifelong habit. It also encourages kids not to eat all of their food. They both encourage schools to move recess before lunch. One person on Facebook agrees. She wrote, our school has recess before lunch, which helps them focus more on eating because they are wore out from playing. This story obviously struck a nerve with parents, and so I first want to thank so many of you for reaching out to me. We had 166 Facebook comments and a bunch of emails from viewers. And the vast majority of you were saying the same thing, that your kids don't have enough time to eat, even the ones who bring lunch. So many families affected by this particular issue. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing, I know where my children go to school and maybe where your kids go to school, you're able to go and eat lunch with them. You can see the process. I know you'd have to check with your school's policy and see if you can, but it's nice to be able to see how they do things if you want to be able to do that. Right, and actually two of the experts recommended right. that. They said that a lot of schools are open to that and that it's often a good idea. Yeah. All right, Tolly, some very interesting insight. And once again, what you learn as a kid can stick with you throughout your life too, those eating habits, those bad ones. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and this is something we'll continue to follow over the next few weeks. All right, very good. Tolly, thanks. Operation Education is WSBT 22's commitment to investigate concerns about our children's education. Monday night at 6, you've heard how schools around the state have struggled with the new iLearn test, but we'll show you the strategies a local school used to place them number one in the state on the English portion. Now, if you have a story you'd like Tolly to look into, call our Operation Education tips line at 574-344-2580 or email operationeducation at wsbt.com.